so when I when I got a little bit, uh, I could hear someone in the crowd go, um, someone in the crowd just yelled, fuck him up, hooligan. And I was like, oh, that's my time to go. And I went in and I got I got hit with a shot. And I was like, fuck, what are you doing, man? Like, stay smart, stay, stick to the plan. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Just mentioned that you just did your last session at Freestyle. How was it, man? It seemed like you had a little, a good crew with you for this camp. Yeah, man. Very, very good crew. So, uh, it's been a good camp. Been uh, put through the paces uh, yet again at, at Freestyle MMA. Good crew of guys, man. Just uh, very, very high level. So... I'm uh, a bit shorter and to be honest I got the same sort of effects from a long camp without that like that kind of getting over it and getting uh, just the injuries and the, the niggles at the end, right at the end of like a eight eight week camp this was more like five weeks and I, I still feel really fresh and uh, but most definitely ready yeah, man. Yeah, sometimes uh, those short camps, man, they they could be a blessing, right? Then you don't have to. You're not you're not too antsy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, um, and especially because I I stay in good shape all the time, and I wanted to fight. So since my last fight, I came out of that fight pretty good. I had a couple of niggles, so I let the UFC know that I wanted to fight by May, and um. Unfortunately, nothing really came, and I just, I basically said to Sean, I said, look, I'm ready to go, so I'm ready for pullouts in May, June, because they were looking at matching me for July, and um, yeah, I just let them know that I'll, I'll be ready, and then this, uh, like, they, they granted me my wish, and this popped up for, for a five-week uh, five camp, and I was already in good shape, you know, I, I already let them know that I'll be ready for a pullout. And, uh, yeah, this, this popped up, so we, we just hit the ground running and nice, short, sharp, fast camp down at, down at Windang with the boys. For sure. And uh, let's talk about that last fight, man. Um, UFC 284, Perth. You're in front of a massive crowd. You're in, you're in your home country. You know, you talked about it after the fight, how, you know, there was moments where you kind of got bored or, you know, you wanted to get into a – uh, you wanted to get into a scrap, right? But then it kind of cost you a little bit because you kind of got stagnant. You know, there's probably some lessons learned in that, right? Yeah, for sure, man. <clears throat> like when I when I said bored, I just meant I, it was it was actually the crowd that kind of made me feel like I was being boring. So I wasn't bored. I was cool. Um, so I should like at the time I just didn't word it like that. But I was completely dictating that that fight you know with the range when I wanted to wrestle when I wanted to stay out at, at range and strike pick him apart and the fight went exactly to plan so um when I said that it was literally in the last round I could have done a bit more I could have been a little bit uh more aggressive but still stay smart still stay stay tactical but like you said man that's that's a learning curve um my coach Ross and, and Joe, they, they both said after the fight that could have done a little bit more in that third round, but, you know, he was a dangerous opponent. I didn't want to take no risks, like an, an unnecessary risk. I knew I had to fight one. So when I when I got a little bit, uh, I could hear someone in the crowd go, um, someone in the crowd just yelled, fuck him up, hooligan. And I was like, oh, that's my time to go. And I went in and I got, I got hit with a shot. And I was like, fuck, what are you doing, man? Like, Stay smart. Stay. Stick to the plan. Um, so yeah, that's learning, man. We'll we'll uh, we'll we'll try and keep that uh, patient approach happening. But yeah, there is times where we can, you know, put a little bit, just apply that little bit more pressure, but stay strict, stay disciplined. Don't don't get wild and have our chin up in the air going all crazy. Uh, yeah, that that was that was the biggest lesson that I learned from that probably. There's the level of maturity. You know what I mean? Like in that performance, because 
the kid is uh, young, but he's very, very dangerous. I think a lot of people didn't give him enough respect. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. <clears throat> you know, he had uh, 11 fights, 11 finishes, um, and he was he was a strong little little uh, strong strong enough and um, had a decent skill set. Uh, and it was I said to Joe um, and Ross after the fight, I said like it was a good opponent to practice staying level-headed and staying um, disciplined with because he was super, super dangerous. But I I had the experience factor, the experience and skill too. It was his first first fight on the in the big leagues on the, under the bright lights in my hometown. So it was massive respect to Francisco for taking that fight because um, my opponent pulled out with nine weeks to go to the fight and no one else stepped up. No one else stepped up for that fight because they knew that, it, like I'm sure plenty of guys couldn't have because they were injured or they were fighting. I get that, but I know for a fact that there were plenty of guys that could have taken that fight on the lightweight roster and no one stepped up because they knew it was going to be a tough fight in my home crowd. So, yeah, um, it was it was a good opponent to just practice being smart and calculated on. Yeah, it's great, man. It's great. You know, you now you're riding on two back-to-back wins, and, and now you're facing a guy I feel like has some good performances in the UFC so far. He's fought two top 15 guys already, you know what I mean? He only has two fights, but he fought top. It's a good test for you, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, they, they've matched us up well for this one because um, we both bring it. And this is my toughest test to date, man. This is, this is big. This is a big fight. And um, I'm looking at, looking at just really taking everything that I've learned so far and make it my best performance yet. Um, and that's exactly how I see it playing out. Very good fight. And... Uh, it's going to be a good test for both of us, I think. What do you think of the skill set, though, with him, you know, from what you saw? Um, very good skill set, man. <laughs> He's obviously got that high-level striking background, and um, he's, he, he, he mixes it up well. Like, I've, I've seen a few of his fights where he, he likes to wrestle, he likes to engage in grappling. I think he'll want to keep the fight predominantly standing. Um, and... I'm going to be looking to pressure him with pace and mixing up the, the, the game of mixed martial arts. I've got to mix it up on this guy, and I can't stay out at that long kickboxing range and let him get off three strikes, because that's what he's going to look to do. If I keep it a, a technical K1 kickboxing fight with him, that's going to be a, a, just a tougher way to, to victory. I've got to mix it up. I've got to mix it up on him. And um, he's, he's got a very high level skill, skill set, and he's he's a he's a, a strong fighter, man. I know he's going to fight. I know that there'll be no uh, no wilt in this guy as well. But this is the fight where I put the will and the skill together. Um, so that's what I'm looking to do. Your last fight was in an arena, man, with a crazy crowd, and, and we talked about how the crowd can influence you. This fight, you're in the apex again. It, it It's kind of, do you feel like it's an advantage for you to be in the apex? Because now you can kind of just zone in on yourself a little bit more rather than having a crowd yelling at you? No, I, I do. I do think that it is a, a small advantage for me, man, because I'm a, I'm a fighter that I listen to my coach. I really listen to my coach's voice. And both times I've fought in the apex now, um, actually... Three times, yeah, three times I've fought in the Apex. It's worked to my advantage because I've got a good set of eyes looking in on me. Uh, Ross Pearson, he, he, he knows how to fight, man, and uh, he knows what to call. He knows me as a fighter. So I think that is going to be a little bit of a, a little advantage for me. Um, but in saying that, the, the last fight, that was, a, that was a little test in my own head when I was going out into the fight just before we walked out. I remember just thinking, just stay relaxed. Stay relaxed and don't let this arena kind of get to you. Um, especially with the layoff of COVID, it was the, the first fight 
The first fight I had in an arena was with Jalen Turner for a, mm. for a quite a while, and it did it, it just like just got me a little bit too excited where I should have I should have been listening and sticking to the game plan a little bit more. I feel like it's easier to do that at the apex, and I feel like it's almost like a super. It's a real fight, but it's like um, probably working my advantage in this fight. Um, so yeah, man, I'm I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I see I see nothing but good things. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about having Ross Pearson. You know, as kind of. He, he's he's basically your main coach, right? Is 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 that fair to say? Yeah, man. Yeah, Ross is. Uh, so the way it happened, um, Ross kind of came and moved his life to the Central Coast, where I'm from, which is crazy because it's just such a small, tiny part of the world. And um, our our place of the world, like the Central Coast, we don't. It's not a big, uh, it's not a big um, fight-friendly population, if that makes sense. You know, like it's not. There's not a lot of uh, high-level gyms. Um, so to have Ross move to the, the my tiny part of the world was just like a blessing, for one, and then also the timing that it happened. So I was with my my main coach Noah Magnus. He brought me up the Australian pro scene um, all the way till I was like ten, uh, nine wins and, and two losses. Right? So he was he was my main coach, and then it just so happened that as he was moving away from where I lived, he was moving his family up north uh, a couple of hours away, and as he was doing that, Ross moved in. So it was like the stars just aligned, you know, and then. I feel like Ross, Noah gave me that uh, amazing mixed martial arts base where he's a, he's a high-level grappler, high-level uh, just mixing everything up. And then, so I kind of got my grappling base with Noah and then um, Ross really brought me up a level in the striking department. Uh, and that, I believe, has made me um, even more of an exciting fighter. I, I was already like, you know, in my 11 fights, there was only one of them ever went to the distance. And then when I joined up with Ross, I just got that next level of um, high, high level fight IQ, you know. And I feel like my striking really developed, or I really developed my own striking uh, with Ross. And he got me uh, on that next level where we, we entered the UFC. Um, and now that story is just uh, kind of keep going, you know. And um, having him with me through even starting with the UFC was like, a, that was a massive help because he knows the game, like, off the back of his hand. He knows how the UFC works. He's had over 30 fights. And he's just got that, like, first-hand experience that you cannot, like, money can't buy. You just can't buy that. Um so now working with him and then getting to work in at uh, Freestyle MMA, Joe Lopez, Alex Volkanovsky, um, the whole team down there, as you know, they're all a, a bunch of um, killers. But it's really working out for me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be a part of it all. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, man. I, I really enjoyed yeah. seeing your development through uh, the last couple of years with Ross and then on top of that joining freestyle MMA and getting uh, Joe Lopez's, you know, yeah. insight and input. And, and you could see it in your, in your performances as, as each fight comes along. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. Um, even the, even, even like my friends and family who know nothing about fighting, they say <laughs> the same thing. They say like, you're, you're, you're hitting new levels. And, um, like I, I don't, I don't listen to that what they say on a technical advice at all, obviously. But everyone can see that I am getting better. I'm, I'm my, my skill set is growing, and I'm reach, I'm re reaching my prime now, which is exciting. So um, I'm entering that prime fight years, and uh, I'm just looking to keep it going, man. Um, keep working with all the boys, and 
hit new levels. And I, I, honestly, John, I feel like I do that every single can. It's great to see also that you and um, you and Alex are both in camp together again. You know, you were in camp for the last one, and you guys are both in camp for for his for your fight and his fight. How how has those rounds been with him? Oh, it, it, like it doesn't get any better. Um, you're doing you're doing your rounds with the, the number one camp to, camp to town guy in the world, featherweight champion, and um, it's like uh, I was talking to one of the boys about it the other day. It's like he's a, he's a special individual, Alex, because when he's in the room, it's like it's like this uh, contagious energy. You see, and, and everyone feels it. Everyone feels it in the room, and everyone just lifts, you know? It's a, he's a really, really special individual, and that's why they're a special team down at Freestyle, because everyone is in there every single day, showing up, grinding together, and then you've got Joe, who just, like, makes it all work. He's just the, the commander of it all. And, um, he, he, he puts light on the situation too, which obviously when, you, when you're in the trenches and you're working so, so hard, um, you, you're dealing with, like, you know, niggles and uh, it, it's, it's not exactly fun unless you make it fun, right? So Joe just takes the piss out of every single person in the room and um, everyone takes the piss out of each other. Like, so it, it makes it a real fun environment to work hard in and... Um, that's why the, you see so much success coming out of that gym. For sure. And, you know, with all this momentum, man, what do you see in this fight coming up, man? What type of performance are you expecting? Yeah, I'm expecting to see a really sharp and focused performance, man. Um, I think it is going to be a scrap. I'm prepared for that. But I think that I'm going to dictate the fight. I really do. I really think that I'm going to dictate where the fight goes. Um, and I'm looking to control the pace of the fight because um, I've, I've, I've just let it go a little bit more than I'd like to before and picking my moments, which obviously that's going to come with experience, right? Um, when, I, when I fought Michael Johnson, I, I just let it all go a little bit too early. So I, I want to have that uh, fast-paced approach where I'm controlling the action and I'm mixing it up, and then when it's time to go, I'm going to pick my time to go, and I'm going to finish it. June 3rd, man, UFC Fight Night in Las Vegas. Jamie, thank you, man, so much for the time, and uh, all the best, man, in this fight coming up. It's going to be a, a crazy scrap. Everybody's expecting that, you know what I mean? So, uh, so we'll see you, man, on the television.